greatest doubles team of all time. That set is amazing. And nobody's going to watch it because nobody knows who Tho is. I, guess. No one. I mean, some people know who Karn is if you follow the NC scene. But shout outs to those guys. Juice Box, however, in singles, not so lucky so far. We'll see how he does in losers. Maybe we'll have him on the stream in a little bit. Wow. Sharks and Tylenol getting right into it. No hand warmer, no problem. Very strong start. For These guys Tylenol. are very warm, and Tylenol says, let's get right into it. That was such a strong stock for yes, Chris. Certainly. That is a zero to death, is what we call that in the industry. Uh, that's when you uh, kill your opponent without taking any damage, zero percent, for those of you guys who might be new to the game. And I think what impressed me more was how efficiently he just killed Nana at the beginning of that. Yep. Deleted That's her. Very, very important in this matchup. Deleted her. And he's trying to go for a right to it again. I mean, I, I, I remember talking to Chris about this matchup last time he went down to Georgia because he was worried about playing either Sharks or one of the Georgia Ice Climbers, like Gas Money or Gas somebody Money, like yeah. that. So we were talking about the matchup, and I was just like, dude, if you can just look at Cobol and how he plays against this matchup when he's playing like very well, like how he played against uh, DJ, uh, or sorry, not DJ, Nintendo, how he played against Nintendo, Nintendo. at Bad Moon Rising 1. I mean, that's just like a perfect example of how you should be playing this matchup. You should be trying to drill them, separate them, shine them. That Just try to like as much shine as possible because it, it's similar to Luigi. When you're shining them, they're going really far, yeah. way outside of their threat range. And th they could ice block you. They could perfect wave dash out of shield maybe and punish you, but shine is very, very good, and it separates them and most of the time. That Ooh. time it sent them both on the same side. You gotta kind of drill to get in the middle. Oh no, really Sharks nice. is so really nice. nice with that handoff though. It's uh, very important in that situation to realize that you are close enough to the edge that Nana will always go for the forward throw, so you can just get that handoff every time. Which is a perfect setup for the wobble. Strong start for Chris, but Tyler with that veteran savvy turns it around. That's one of the things I like about Tyler is that no matter how badly he gets body on some of his stocks or sometimes how Nana just dies, he, he's so like, his play style is just not affected. Like, he's not he, easily shaken at all. He kind of loves getting body. Like that's the he kind loves of he loves competition. Exactly, he loves but being like pushed. He's he, like yeah, he's that's what I'm like saying. Goku, right? which is weird to say, but <laughs> he has like a Goku mentality. Can you imagine Goku. sharks with just the the <laughs> spiky No, I can't. Cold. I can't. <laughs> I can't. But I, he he does enjoy the he does enjoy sets where it's very close and he somehow miraculously wins, mm -hmm. or if he loses to a set where he just dominates for sure. Like like when you saw last week at Hornet's Nest, uh, he prevailed over Smash Bob in a grueling match and. Popped off yeah. the most I have ever seen him pop off in his life. This is certainly not that. This match is way more high Very pace. Very fast. And he is keeping up with Chris. No issue. Here comes another maybe handoff yeah. here. Amazing display from Tyler Very, very there. nice. Nice handoffs. Skill cam incoming. All right. Well, I honestly think Chris played very well. I do too. And but he just needs to like pick his spots a little bit better. Because he was getting called out in a lot of situations. I honestly feel that wow. if you if you watch match a match like that and you understand the context of every stock, even though the deficit of the score was pretty, you know, severe, you can say Chris performed well if you watch the match. Oh yeah. You definitely can say that he was on the right track with a lot of that stuff. It's just that when you're playing as a player like Tyler, who has tools like these handoffs, he can severely change the score when he when he touches you. He can severely handle you. So, Tyler, Tyler, definitely one of the most control-based players. Ooh. I can't believe he almost uh, converted off of that Nana get-up attack. Nana fighting to get back as hard as she can. Oh, I think he let her, let her back. Oh, she got confused and rolled toward the edge, and that's going to be her life. Yeah, one thing you can do for sure is be indecisive. I mean, that's with any character in yeah. this matchup. And no matter who you're fighting the Ice Climbers with, if you separate them, you got to pick one and go for it. Because you have so many good tools for killing either one. You can always debate about which one's better for that particular moment, but you got to not try to do that thing where you try to bounce back and forth and keep them away from each other. I mean, it just always ends up with mana randomly force matching or something just crazy. Ooh, I like that weight. It kind of let Nana get up and start to do something so that it separated them better, right? 
That was interesting. Tyler being a little Ooh. careless with his fares now because he got that one really insane handoff from him, and I feel like Chris is looking for it now. Nice patience by Chris and a good display of matchup knowledge to throw one climber into the other as right. well. I am a little concerned about some of Chris's uh, throw choices. Back throw is the worst one for separating them. It doesn't have much of a hitbox, but if they they are behind, it is the best one I just, for that. Yeah, I felt like in that situation he was pressed. But even forward throw has back. a really good hitbox behind him. Uh, yeah, because it'll still hit your back, you're still... Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> Gets rid of Nana, which is good. He uh, he definitely can come into the lead here if he can get rid of Sopo, but Sharks' Ooh. Sopo is not to be slept with, slept on, or, or trifled with. with. Or slept with, for that matter. I mean, he's probably <laughs> underage. <laughs> I don't know how old Sopo is. It's been 13 for 25 years plus. It's, it's not worth the try. <laughs> I can't believe Sharks got back there, honestly. Yeah, I mean, I, dude, he, he's good with Sopo, man. He, his Sopo uh, has handled some folks in the past. Yeah, and not in that way, he perverts. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> the look oh, on Sharks. Oh, what? Oh. He got 37%. I mean, that's a mean Sopo. Sharks definitely playing a dangerous game there, going to that, going to that edge of that side view. But he does make it back. Chris Ooh. trying hard to get that shine, but man, is just not at home. I would like for him to take a little bit of time to to get on the platforms. There we go, and just like take a second to wow, that mid one was so good. Yeah, those yeah. are so hard. He was not expecting that at all. No, no. And generally, you you don't at he this wasn't level, out, right? He wasn't out there for a long time. Like you can be out, you can be floating out there for a little bit and then do it, and it's not quite as impressive because you had time to think about it and do it. But that was pretty much on reaction to being tossed out. Right. Nice up air, Nana, no di Johnson off the top. Is he gonna get that? There it is. Yes, okay. sir. Yes, sir. So Tylenol PM finding some answers here in this second game on Dreamland. Let's see if he can keep it up. Oh. He's got a lot of momentum right now, and Sharks is feeling the heat. Yeah, Sharks yeah. loses game two on Sharks Dreamland. forced to save Nana in that situation where I believe she buffered an air or something and fell, uh, and it was completely her fault. <laughs> definitely wasn't Tyler's fault. Definitely wasn't Chris's fault. So it we don't know whose fault, fault it was. Some uncredited intern probably at Nintendo who designed this character. Wow, very who's, quick. Who's to not even in the mini game at the end where you're shooting the... The they press. didn't even get their name shot. They did, they're just completely uncredited because they were an unpaid intern, so they didn't, they didn't have any paperwork. But they got the pride. Of making this ridiculous character, the Ice Climber, so we love. All right. Speaking of, Tyler getting mad love from Chris there in the form of some shines on the edge and costing him an early stop here, 30 seconds into the third game. Oh, wow, okay. Really good uh, tech option from Chris to avoid getting hit there. Okay, he's playing this really well. He's played yeah. a lot of this game very like doubles, where it's he can get like a hit on one, a hit on the other, just to make sure that he gets a positive situation with one of them. It's right? very impressive how he's able to Ooh. do that same game plan on FD so well, where this is a stage where Tyler should be feeling his most confident. I sure. think it's more important on FD because you don't have that time to take a breath, right? Yes. So you have to be in this situation where you're just, I'm, I'm here, I'm here, I'm hitting both of them because you don't have an option. Sharks now in a position here to get back in this game when he's got both nice. climbers on the ground. He's wave dashing, he's moving. He can get two oh. big grabs here and, and even it back up, but Tylenol is not making it easy with this game plan. No, he's no. showing a very high matchup IQ in this third game all of a sudden. He is adjusting, his, his timing and his range is being found more often. Really good call out from That's Tyler. That's a rough mistake though. That's yeah. a big error. I think uh, Tylenol was a little bit flustered from getting his jump called yeah. out like that. So he wasn't ready to do a good ledge option. And Tyler was ready for all of those options. It was crazy. Tyler grabs him again oh my God. from behind, I think. I think that was like a Nana butt grab or something. Also, completely RNG where Nana threw there and happened to be the easiest one for Tyler to get a hand handoff into a wobble for. Jay Willie coming at you with the knowledge. <laughs> Doing my best. On choice <laughs> GG. That's why he's here. Oh. Oh, my God. He just... 
gave up on the Nana stock, got spooked by Tyler. Two big grabs, like I said, from Sharks, and this game is back swaying in his favor after Chris had such a strong start, just like in this first game. We're seeing that strong start kind of fizzle away after a little bit. Yeah, I, oh, that That's nair. Rough. Yeah. Chris not liking that at all. You can't do that. Chris not digging that at all. And we take you live to the wobble cam. The MASH students, of course, wondering what the heck is going on. Joe still enthralled here. with the match. Joey <laughs> smashed hot live <laughs> in the crowd. K pan pants is what I call those. K pan pants? The red pants. Okay. So I understand why he would want to go to stadium. He's not been one to abuse the top platform or uh, really use a lot of jumping to stay away from he these was wobbles. He playing so well on FD. He was. For a minute. And this is like FD like at this point, and then just the. The transformations are so bad for Ice Climbers. Nana is just such oh, an idiot. Oh, yeah. They're, they're, she doesn't know how to deal with that at all. <laughs> wow. Chris trying some new stuff there. Yeah. Chris trying to get a little creative. Nice. Wow. I don't think uh, Nana will be able to recover. Oh, oh, she does, no. but she takes an up air for her trouble. And she's still and alive. She's just alive. And not at that much percent either. Yeah, well... Chris is being really tricky with his movement here. Yeah, the nairs are being actually really, really tricky is what I was finding. I was finding that his nair timing was just being staggered a lot. From right. Before. I think that's because he got caught on that nair on that last stock, right? Yeah. He's like, oh, I need to I need to fix that. He tightens up a little bit. This wow. If he had gotten that last shine, that would have been such a great execution of Nana. Yep. He okay. takes a back air rough there. I mean, he almost died from that first down smash earlier. Oh, oh he has to get quite. out of there. He has to He has to move. He has to evacuate the burning house. Yeah, Nana fell off this, the platform there. Uh, she was teetering, so it was just over. He was playing like a man who was trying not to get grabbed right there, honestly. You got to play like a man who wants to get the hit. He was not flowing. <laughs> he was just running from Tyler. That's what Tyler like, thrives on. Literally living up to his name in those moments where you're just trying to run away and not get grabbed. He's getting with a shark. He's like smelling that you don't want to get caught. The top listen was really clever. So uh, after Chris lost his jump, like the whenever you get Blizzard, the good player reaction is to SDI out. So he was trying to bait Chris into SDIing out into an edge guard situation. So it's really interesting. And he immediately gets a grab when Chris returns. Chris not digging it at Wailing. all. Wailing. His face telling a very different story than his heart or mind, I am sure, right now. Mm -hmm. um, he is trying to contain himself and get back in this game, get refocused, I hope. Definitely some expletives going on, he said. And he could do it right. Oh, I wanted, quite, that, yeah. I wanted to see that shine just a little bit better space so it would send both the climbers off the stage. Up smash, da it Nana, no D.I. Johnson off the top. <laughs> and Tyler can't take that second one. All right. So Chris definitely has a chance. Good transformation to for Fox. Gives him a top platform to escape pressure. There are two climbers. They are currently separated. Chris can do a lot of work here. Tyler trying to recover Ooh. them. He will grab Chris again. Good SDI. Chris is kind of playing a little scared again. I don't yeah. like that. He can't get out of the corner. He doesn't know what to do. Like oh, yeah. no. He reacted so. Yeah. Ah, it was a man under pressure. You saw Tyler put him in the pressure cooker there. And it was almost like an invisible pressure. I mean, I really just feel like a rising bear. I mean, there was there was a lot of – I felt like there was a lot of opportunities for him to get back. There. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think the biggest problem there was that he didn't trust his tech skill just a little bit for I just mean, a second, right? Like I said, he was he was in a position where he was doing so good, and then he got to that point where he was like, oh, an ice block hit me like mm -hmm. as I was trying to come in, and he just kind of – Gave Tyler he way out. too much time to set the trap, and then he just reacted like a man who was in a pressure cooker. He just was like, hey, side B, get me out of here. He wanted out so bad, and, right and Sharks bubble. gives him a way out yeah. in the end. So, Sharks moving on, and I'm sure we will. We have yet to see the last of that young man oh, no, I'm sure. in this tournament. Yeah. I'm sure he will be back on stream for He's us on very shortly. Definitely going to come back with a vengeance here.
Well, you're stepping on me, my mic cord.